Hey, this is Chan, and today I just have a quick video to show some of the pens and other little supplies that I use in my Hobonichi, alright? This is a caddy that I got. Um, I got this several months ago, and I love this thing. It looks kind of like a toolbox. It's really cute, and it fits a lot of my stuff too, so I just, I really love this. I'll link to this in my video description if you want to get one. Alright, so let's start with the pens. I, I typically use fine liner, you know, marker fine liner pens when I'm writing because I just... I like having lots of colors and I just prefer the smoothness of fine liners. So I typically use these ones here. These are Marvy Le Pens and these are some Stabilo ones. And then there's these ones here. This brand is, I want to say Maped, Maped Graph Peps. Um, so those are some other ones that I use in my Hobonichi. The only thing is, to be honest with you, I really like Marvy Le Pens. But the tips do wear down kind of fast. I kind of, I, I think I press a little hard when I'm writing though. So maybe that's, I mean, that doesn't help, right? But it just seems like they wear down really quickly. I mean, I don't know if my camera will focus on that for you. But you can see this one here is way shorter than the other. And I think I was only using this for maybe two or three weeks, not long at all. So they do, the tips wear down kind of fast, but I really like some of the colors. For example, this one here is one of my favorite colors. Um, this one's called Oriental Blue, which is a beautiful shade of blue. And I know it just might seem like another blue pen, but it's not, it's a, it's a beautiful shade. And then here's Teal, I love that one too. And the Burgundy, I really love that. And I, all, I also use the Olive Green quite a bit as well. Okay, so let me just show you the page that I did in my Hobonichi, so you can see the colors. Marvy Le Pens. I don't like the black though, as you can see. It's not really black. I don't know if I just got a, a dud, but I don't really want to have to buy another black just to find out. So it's actually really quite light, the black. I don't like it. But see there's... I don't know if my camera will pick up on the difference between the red and the burgundy, but the burgundy is easier on the eyes. I really like it. And the reason why I put Marvy Le Pen after each one is just because I wanted to more of a color to show. I wanted to, because if I just write red or blue and it's so short, right? So that's why I just wanted to write everything out so you can see more of the color. Really great colors. So there's that teal and oriental blue. I love the oriental blue and the teal. They're so nice. All right, so there's the Marvy Le Pen. Oh, I should show you the back. You can see they don't bleed through the Hobonichi paper, the Tomoe, Tomoe River paper. The only thing is, sometimes I'll use the Marvy Le Pens to color in little pictures, and if you color over the same spot a little too much, then it will bleed through. So just as a warning there. Alright, so next up are the Mayped Fine Liners. And I have a set of 20 of them, but I only put select colors here, because I only put the ones that I, you know, kind of like a little bit more. Alright, so there's this teal one. I love that one. And I really like this light brown as well. I write with that one a lot. This lilac's kind of fun. And even though I'm not really crazy about pink, this there's this kind of this is sort of a dustier pink, so it's it's kind of nice. And this dark green is kind of nice too. All right, here's my Mayped Graph Peps color chart, and I wrote Mayped Graph Pep with each color just so that. You know, you could see more of each color. Uh, I don't know if the company gave the colors official names or anything, because I didn't keep the original packaging. Uh, so I just made up names for them. You can see that teal color there. I love that. Such a great shade. And this light brown, I reach for that one a lot, because I just... It's really easy on the eyes. I really like that one. And this dusty pink, even though I'm not that crazy about pink, it's kind of a nice shade. It's sort of like a... It's sort of like a Kind of almost mauve-ish sort of color. And it's quite nice. And then this dark green, it's kind of like a slightly grayish emerald. You know, it's not a bold emerald, but slightly grayish emerald. You can see that it, it did quite well on the Tomoe River paper. There's one part here where I hesitated a little bit, and then it did bleed through though. But, you know, that kind of happens with lots of markers. Oh, I should show you this. I don't know if my camera's going to show this, but there you can see the difference in the black. <laughs> The Marvy Le Pen black is quite light. It's not a good black. Another bunch of markers I use are these Zebra Mild Liners. I really like these, even though I've never, to be honest, I've never liked 
highlighters before I got these. Even when I was in school, I never used highlighters because I, I really don't like fluorescent colors, right? So when I found these, I was just kind of curious about them because they come in really nice colors. But I don't really use them in sort of the traditional sense. <laughs> I actually just like to color with them because they don't bleed through. Uh, they don't bleed through the Tomoe River paper. Let me show you. I really like these colors here. These are nice too. But those ones, I don't know. I just love those. They're quite cute. I gotta say. <laughs> I know that some people don't care about that sort of thing, but I just think they're really cute. Look at them. They look cute. So you can see that the zebra mod liners don't bleed through the Tomoe River paper, which is awesome. Now, even if I'm coloring back and forth a few times, I don't get bleed through, which is great. All right, if you press pages against each other, then you can see stuff because Tomoe River paper is really thin, right? But the real test is when you put something behind there. So let's just put this behind there. You can really see. And you can really tell that there's no bleed through. It's great. Love them. Now, I forgot to show that the zebra mod liners have two tips on them. They got this broad tip and this this one here. So really fun for drawing with and uh, coloring stuff in with. All right, I've got some more pens to share with you. Uh, this is a pen case that I got off of Jet Pens. And the neat thing about this is if you like to store your marker pens or your pens flat, you can do that with this. But then it becomes a standing case when you're sitting at your desk and getting ready to write. So you can see it's got this base like this. And when you want it to turn into a little pen cup, it's got these little tabs here. And you just pull them down. And then the case becomes a pen cup. <laughs> Isn't that cute? I just think that's so adorable. So in this little case here, I've got, you can see it's quite full. Um, I've got some black fine liners and also my favorite brush pens. These are my favorite brush pens. These are Pentel Touch Sign Pens. I love these. Um, I haven't tried a huge amount of brush pens, maybe just uh, maybe about a dozen different types. But after I tried these, I just I really love them, and so I just kind of stopped looking <laughs> because before I would, I tried a bunch of other ones and I was just kind of meh about them. And then when I found these, I just I really did love these a lot. So I didn't really want to spend more money on brush pens that I might just be meh about. You know what I mean? Here are some of my favorite colors out of them. There are 12 different colors, and I just, I love these ones especially. Uh, I use this one a lot. This was yellow ochre. I love that one. I use it a lot. Uh, these are not to be confused with the Pentel sign pens, though. The sign pens are regular felt tip pens, but uh, the touch sign pens have the flexible nib, so you can get your brush lettering with them. The only thing is, I think some of the newer packaging doesn't even say touch sign pen on them. I think some of the newer packaging says sign pens with brush tips or with flexible tips or something like that but in any case i'll link to some of them so that you can easily find them um, the sign pens have a solid plastic body but the touch sign pens have glitter in the plastic i don't know if my pen will focus on that but there's glitter throughout the plastic so that's how you can tell that they're and also these ones say touch right on them too <laughs> all right there are a few things that i wanted to mention about the touch sign pens uh, the ink flows really well out of them. Uh, some people might call them very wet or very inky. I happen to really like the ink flow out of them, but the only thing is, if you're writing slower in your Hobonichi, then more ink is getting onto the paper, right? And that kind of increases your chances of having more of the ink showing through the other side. So when I was writing this, I, I was writing slower than usual, just because I was trying to keep this neat looking to show you. Um, and so because of that, more of it shows through the other side. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, my camera kind of washes stuff out sometimes. But there is some bleed through on the orange, and there I started to get some bleed through on the pink and the blue there. And if you put the Shitaji feet behind there, uh, hopefully you can see. You can kind of see more of my writing through there compared to the other pens that I showed you before. Right? On this side here, I wrote Hobonichi out a couple of times at more of a regular speed, not as slowly as with this other page. And I, it did do a little bit better. So, let's see here. I mean, if you have pages pressed together, then you can see, I guess they call it shadowing. But, if you put the Shitajiki behind there, then you can see these ones did do a little bit better than the previous page. Okay, there's something else I gotta mention about the touch sign pens. With certain colors of them, I got this really neat dark and light effect. I don't know if you can see it there, but 
there are dark and light areas in my writing in that one there. I just, I really love the way that looks. I just feel like it gives my writing more depth or something. You know, just, I just really love the way it looks. So that's the yellow ochre, which I, I love the yellow ochre one. There's not, I mean, it's yellow ochre is not really a common color to, to find in markers and pens. So I was, this is definitely one of my favorite ones. And I do get this light and dark effect with this one probably the most. And some of the other colors that I get that effect with is the sky blue. It doesn't really show there, but the sky blue does give me the dark and light effect quite often as well. And the green, I get that with the green as well. And sometimes I get that with the gray and sometimes with the brown too. So with these colors, I get that really neat dark and light effect. So I totally thought this video was going to be a short video, but it's turned into a longer video, all right? And you're probably wondering what happened there. Um, I just messed something up on the bottom of the page, so I just cut it off. So the next pens I'm going to talk about are Uni Pin Pens, and these are black fineliner pens. I use these quite often, and the they're numbered on the top of the uh, caps, so that's pretty handy when you've got them in a pen cup or in a case like this. And these are the sizes that I have. The numbering on them is a little bit confusing. Uh, the 0 0.1 is supposed to be 0 0.1 millimeters, but then the 0 0.1 is supposed to be 0 0.28 millimeters, and the 0 0.3 is supposed to be 0 0.3 millimeters, but then the 0 0.3 is supposed to be 0 0.38 millimeters. So it's a little bit confusing. Um, honestly, I don't see that much of a size difference in some of them, um, but I do I do like using these quite a lot and. I should mention though that I have gotten some wear down on the tip. The 0 0.1 millimeter is the one that I use the most. And I'm not sure if you can see that. Please focus camera. The camera is not very cooperative most times, but I'm trying to get it to focus and it just won't. See that? It just won't do it. So anyways, um, my 0 0.1 millimeter, it has worn down a little bit compared to this zero one, which I haven't used quite as often. Um, this is with quite a bit of use though. I do use this to write and draw with a lot. So even though there is some wearing down of the tip, it's it didn't wear down as quickly as the Marvi Le Pens. I find that the Marvi Le Pens wear down much quicker than, than the, the Uni Pin Pen. So these do really, really well on the Tomoe River paper. You can see there. And then if you have the Shitajiki behind there, you don't see any of the uni pin pens through the paper. Isn't that great? So I do use these quite a lot because of that. The next ones I'm going to talk about are the Sakura Pigma Micron pens. Um, I got a set of eight, which comes with this Pigma Graphic 1, which is a, supposed to be a one millimeter thick line width. And then also it comes with this Pigma brush pen. But to be honest with you, I really don't like this brush pen at all. Um, I guess if you if you like to draw with brush pens, then you might like this, but I typically don't draw with brush pens. I use them to write with, and I just, you see, I try to write that as nicely as I could, but I just, I really don't like the way that looks. I just don't like this brush tip on it. I much prefer the touch sign pens we're writing with. Um, so I bought the, pa the pack of eight with these two, but if I was to do it over again, I would just buy the pack of six, which gives you the it gives you the six micron pens and you don't get the graphic one or the pigma brush pen in a set of six. So if I was to do it over again, I would get the set of six and just save myself a few bucks and not get these ones because I really don't use these ones that much. There's nothing really wrong with the graphic one. I just don't, I just don't usually use it. But the pigma brush, I just really don't like it. Okay. These ones do really well on the Tomoe River paper as well. You can see. Let's just move this over. They don't show through the Tomoe River paper. So they do very well on the Tomoe River paper as well. All right, there are a few more pens I'm going to talk about. Here are the Uniball Signal 0 0.5 millimeter gel pens. And these are great. They write really, really smoothly. And the colors I have are Mandarin, Orange, and this Golden Yellow. And I do really like the Golden Yellow. It's really nice. Although this Mandarin Orange, I just love this. It's such a great shade of orange. I love it. And I don't know what it is about orange ink, but I love writing with orange ink. I guess it's because it's just really happy. Something about it, I love it. Uh, I'm not really sure why I haven't ordered more colors yet because I really do like these a lot. I just haven't ordered pens in a while, so I just, uh, 
I have, my, I have some on my wish list, some other colors on my wish list from this line of gel pens that I want to get. There's some greens and a couple of light blues that I want to get. So maybe in a couple of months when I'm ready to order more pens again, then I'll pick up some more colors and share them with you. Okay. And I also want to talk about this pen from, this is from Hobonichi. They give this as a freebie with certain items that you order from them, right? And it's actually a Uni Jetstream ballpoint pen. And it has three colors, black, blue, and red. And these actually, this pen writes really, really smoothly. I mean, if you if you buy kind of like cheap ballpoint pens, sometimes they can be quite frustrating because you get a bunch of skips in them, right? But this one, it writes very smoothly. I really do like it. Okay, next up is the Sakura Jelly Roll White Gel Pen. And I really like these gel pens because they're not very expensive at all, but I, they write pretty smoothly. Um, I actually use these to add little highlights to my coloring sometimes, or if I want to color in some little eyeballs to make them whiter, I'll use this pen. And here's a lead pencil. This is a Corone from Pilot. It's one of the types that where you shake, you sh do this, you shake it, and then the lead advances when you shake it. It's a little different. All right, next up is this blender pen. And this is one of my favorite ways to color in my Hobonichi. Uh, I actually really want to do a coloring video soon. Um, so I think I'll just talk about this more in that video instead of making this video even longer because this video is getting kind of long. But uh, but this is definitely, I love coloring this. It's just a very simple and fun way to color. So I'll talk about that in another video. Over here, I just have some paint brushes for water coloring with. And I have these little guys here. This is a metal stencil that I showed in one of my other videos. <laughs> I just think this little guy's so cute. Cat-shaped stencil, isn't he adorable? And then my cat ruler. I love his expression, he's so cute. There's those little guys there. All right, let's show you this side now. Okay, so here we have a bunch of fun little accessories. Uh, over here we have these mini wooden spools. I bought these mini wooden spools off of Etsy and I hand rolled washi tape onto there. Um, and then this is, well, actually all of these stamps are from Japan. I ordered them off of Etsy as well. Uh, I love these little cats. There's actually a fifth stamp from that set. This one here, this little bell. But I really just bought the set because of the cats, right? So there's a little guy with a little love heart and there's a little happy male cat. And then this little guy's got the little yen thing. <laughs> I got a hedgehog, a poodle, and I bought a little red riding hood stamp set as well. Although, I'm not gonna lie, I just bought the stamp set because of this little guy. I love this little guy. The little wolf. He's so cute. Look at that smile. He's a little adorable. I love him. And I also bought a bunch of Snoopy stamps. And here's just a couple of them here. We got the... Oh, this one's so sweet. Because they're giving each other a nice hug. And then there's the postmark with the little paw print. So cute. All right, and then there's a couple little clips there. You're probably wondering what this thing is. This is a mini adhesive runner. Isn't that cute? I think anything is cuter in mini size, uh, but it's kind of expensive per meter if you do the math, because this was, it cost me $3 Canadian and there's only eight meters in there. Uh, normally I use like big rolls of tape like this because you get a lot more tape for your money, but I just thought this was so cute. And you go like this, you push it forward and you can use it and it's, it's totally adorable. So when it's in your pencil bag, you can close it and it doesn't get tape all over your stuff. You know what I mean? It's totally cute, love it. All right, under there, is that neat how this slides out? You can slide this out. And under there, we've got erasers, another little red riding hood stamp, and another little mini spool of washi tape. And over here, I keep my mini acrylic blocks, and I use those for stamping. Uh, they fit a lot of the planner stamps really well because they're nice and small. So some other time, I'll do a video about the stamps that I use and the uh, ink pads I use. All right, so there you have it. There are my supplies, some of my supplies anyway, for my Hobonichi. I hope you enjoyed my video and thanks for watching. All right, bye.